hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we are doing a whip and chat. So get out whatever it is you're working on. Work along with me. If you're new to diamond painting and you don't know what a whip and chat is, whip stands for work in progress. So whatever that is for you, feel free to get it out and work along with me as I tell you some stories from the coffee house and all the shenanigans. So again, I hope you guys had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about pets, okay? Now, we all know that Miss Coffee has a jungle at her house. Um, if you don't know and you're new, hey, I'm Miss Coffee. So I have two dogs and two ferrets. Technically, I have three dogs, but the third dog lives with my parents, so you don't hear about him too often. Now, I have two dogs that live here with me, uh, and that's mostly because uh, when I moved here, I was only allowed to bring two animals, so I brought the two biggest dogs because I figured they could handle the winter better than the smallest dog, and the smallest dog went to go stay with my parents for a little bit. Don't worry, at some point, I will be able to get my dog back, but right now, we just got the two dogs chilling. So, let's talk about the two dogs that live in my house. Now, we all know that as long as you have a dog, you will never be alone, okay? Dogs will follow you off of a cliff if they have to, but they will follow you everywhere you go. So this weekend, um, we were essentially just doing our thing. Everybody was just kind of lounging around, being lazy, watching TV, and uh, Mr. Coffee was playing video games with the kids and such. Now, Mr. Coffee's playing Minecraft with the kids, and I'm sitting here this weekend, as you can tell. I didn't get a lot of progress done on Bevy. Sorry, Bevy. She has been a wonderful house guest, super quiet. She just kind of has been hanging out here in the back room while we were all sitting up front this weekend. Um, I got Mr. Coffee to hang some more shelves for me for my uh, Scentsy Buddies. And so, you know, she, she's, been, she's been a great house guest. She hasn't given me any trouble. She doesn't talk a whole lot, though, so I was a little concerned about that. Like, I'm like, had to come back and check on her, like, hey, Bevy, you okay? So, we're all just kind of sitting up front doing our own thing on Saturday, and Mr. Coffee's like, you know, do we have any plans today? And the kids were like, can we just play video games? And Mr. Coffee was like, okay, because anytime Mr. Coffee can sit and play video games, he's going to play video games. So, they're playing video games, and I actually had a tester pattern. So, if you didn't know, I do pattern testing for Happily Hooked Magazine. Um, I essentially just get the patterns and make sure that by the time they get to you, they're not full of errors and, like, miscalculations and stuff. So I was doing a pattern this weekend that had me completely stumped because I had never done, I've done the stitch, but I never did it this way. It was a Tunisian stitch. I've never done it the way that the, uh, the I, I've never done it in the way that the person that wrote the pattern uh, had it written out. And I was just like, what in the world did I get myself into? Now, I don't test often with them. Mostly because a lot of the patterns are bigger, like blankets and sweaters, and I don't have the time to do, like, a whole blanket and a whole sweater in a week. So, I'm just like, mm, 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 no. So, I saw this little sunglass case, like, it's an eyeglass case, and I was like, ooh, let me go ahead and get on that. Like, that's simple. That's pretty simple and easy. And I haven't tested since before, like, all my surgeries and COVID and all that other fun stuff. So, I was like, well, let me go ahead and test something small. Let me test this. And I'm thinking, it's, it looks like a shell stitch almost. So let me go ahead and test this. Wrong. Wrong. Look, that I I have still yet to complete that pattern. I think it has like 18 rows and I have yet to complete it. I get to row three. It looks nothing like the pattern. I get frustrated. The lady is telling me to calm down and I'm like, I can't calm down. I've never had a pattern test a uh, pattern stump me so hard in my entire life. And I'm not going to give up on it. I'm still working on it. I told her I'm like I'm not going to make it in time for the like the testing part of it like over Proofreading it, I got you. There was like a couple of errors. But like actually executing the pattern, look, listen, the way my life is set up, me and this pattern about to fight, we about to throw bows. So I literally spent my entire weekend testing this pattern over and over and over again because I could not get the stitch down. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, I got to go to the bathroom. So I get up and I go to start getting to the bathroom. Now take it, Mr. Coffee has his headset on. So he's talking to the kids who are upstairs in their bedrooms playing from their devices upstairs. And so they all have headsets on. So I decide I'm going to get up and go to the bathroom. So, you know, nothing, you know, whatever about that. I just went up to the bathroom. Well, as I go into the bathroom, apparently I didn't close the door all the way or Killian decided that he, he wanted in the bathroom. He needed to make sure that I was safe and nobody was in there to murder me. And he slams the bathroom door open. Now, if you remember, he's done this before where he hit me in the head with the door because the bathroom downstairs is just a little half bath. So it's pretty small. So, like, 
he's the first time he did this he he like like jumped up on the door and the door came back and hit me in the face because the the toilet is right behind the the door so i was like oh god dang it well this time when he did it i heard him outside of the door like boofing which boofing for killian is like a low bark he's just like Bruh. like he it's like he's too lazy to open his mouth all the way for a full bark so you get like a half a bark we call it a boof um so i'm sitting there and I hear him, and so when I see the door coming at me, I was able to brace myself to get the door not to hit me in the face. I'm gonna need to put some more wax in my pen. And so I, he opens the door, and I'm like, excuse me, sir, can I help you? And he's just kind of standing there staring at me, like from around the door, like a creeper. And I'm like, uh, can, can, can I help you, sir? The next thing I know, he comes walking in. Now again, remember, this is not a big bathroom. He comes walking in and then sits in the corner of the bathroom. And I'm like, uh, okay. I got to go close the door and then Daisy stops me. And I'm like, well, what the heck are you doing now? She stops me. She's peeking around the corner. And I'm like, y'all both can't fit in here. Literally, like the bathroom is small. Like my feet can touch the cabinet in the bathroom. My hands can touch the wall. So I'm like, this is not a big bathroom. Well, here comes Daisy and him, Daisy and Killian are like doing the tango and square dance and trying to both fit into the bathroom so they can sit there and stare at me, go to the bathroom. Now take it. As they come in there, I try to close the door and they're just not having it. So Daisy comes all the way in, pretty much was sitting on my lap. I close the door and I'm like, look, listen, I'm okay in this bathroom. I don't need adult supervision in the bathroom. There are times where I probably should have adult supervision. This is not one of those times. Both dogs are looking at me. Daisy's like doing the little head tilt thing that German Shepherds do. Killian's just looking at me like, yeah, I don't care. I, I don't care what you got going on with your life. I'm, I'm just going to sit here and watch. And I'm like sitting there very self-conscious because they look like they're both judging me and all my life choices. And then the next thing I know, I look over at the door because I see something move. And I'm like, well, what, what is that now? It's Anna East, the ferret, coming underneath the door. Now, if you don't know, I do have two ferrets. Anna East is the girl, and Gumball is the boy. Gumball is the chubby one, and Anna East is the slimmer one. Anna East can slide, she can slide underneath the doors. Now, because there's like a little gap underneath the doors. If you know anything about ferrets, ferrets can sw squish themselves down really small to get into like small places. Now, Gumball has gotten to a point where he's accepted the life of the chubby, and he will not try to, like, squeeze into, like, the bathroom or anything like that because he knows that he'll get stuck. And he has gotten stuck. And that's that, that was a very rough experience getting him unstuck from underneath the door. So he won't even attempt it. But Anais is like, no, I choose violence. I'm doing this now. So she comes in. So at some point, I'm trying to sit there and, like, finish up in the bathroom. Now, take it. I've only been in here for five minutes. And in the five minutes I've been in there, there's a dog, a dog, and now a ferret all three looking at me like hey what are you doing you you need some company like i like i needed somebody to come in and hold my hand and they were they were um applying for the job and i'm just like um excuse me like you ever go to the bathroom and your pet just sit there and stares at you and you're like like and, and i i know i know before somebody says it i know dogs do follow you into the bathroom because it's like a pack thing where they have to make sure that you're safe to go to the bathroom so that nothing attacks you i get it but we are humans, and nobody typically comes into the bathroom to attack somebody, especially not in their own home. It's not like Mr. Coffee was going to get up, right, and then start attacking me in the bathroom. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, uh, hun, hun. Now remember, Mr. Coffee has on his headphones. He cannot hear me. So I'm in there struggling, and I'm like, hun, hun. Yo, look, listen. I got up off the, the bathroom, could not get out of the bathroom because we got stuck because of the two dogs. They're big, so we got stuck in there. And Ais, of course, she squished herself out because she's able to go underneath the door. And meanwhile, I'm like knocking on the wall, like, Mr. Coffee, Mr. Coffee, come get me out of the bathroom. He hears me, comes over and goes, why can't I get the door open? I'm like, the dogs are in here and I don't know how to get like unstuck. And he's like, okay, hold on a second. He's like, move the, try to get the dogs to shuffle behind the door. I'm like, you know, there's a whole toilet over here. Like Daisy's 110 pounds. Killian is 82 or 86 pounds. I can't remember. 
but they're still really big dogs. And I'm supposed to shuffle them around this tiny room to be able to get her. At the time, by the time I were eight, we were able to get me out. I'm standing on top of the toilet, okay? Both dogs on either side of the toilet. And then Mr. Coffee opens the door to then let Daisy out. Had to close the door to get Killian from behind the door. Then to let him out. And then I was able to come out. Whole ordeal took about 25 minutes. And I'm like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. Like, seriously? So I was like really, really irritated with that. And I was just like, look, listen, when my life is set up, why do these things keep happening to me? Like, I feel like my life is just this endless un a series of unfortunate events. So... Once we get through this debacle, I had to call my mom because uh, it's tax time, tax time, tax time, time to do those taxes. So it's tax time. And of course, my mother does my taxes for me because she does taxes because for some reason she likes math. She is a nightmare human. And so she did my taxes. And last week I got a, a check in the mail and I'm like, who the hell's out here still sending out paper checks? Like, what the hell? And at first I saw Mr. Coffee's name on it. And I was like, look, listen. What are you doing on the weekends that you getting paper checks in the mail? You str you hooking on the weekends? Is that what's happening? They paying you in checks? Like what the what kind of bougie place you working for? He looks at me. He's like, "What the hell are you talking about?" I'm like, "Why is there a paper check in the mail?" He goes, "Did you try to open it?" "No, it has your name on it." I didn't realize it had both of our names on it. I just saw his name cuz his name was at the top. And so I was like, "No, it has your name on it." So he looks at it. He opens it up. He goes, "Technically it has both of our names on it, but whatever." So he opens it up and he goes, "It's a check." And I'm like, oh, uh, why do why do we get a paper check? He goes, is this our taxes? And I'm like, no, our taxes are getting direct deposited. Posited. Like, what are you talking about? Taxes? Taxes are getting direct deposited. I get my 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 bleh, bleh, bleh. I get my taxes direct deposited every year. Um, so I was like, what makes this year so different? Like, why wouldn't I get it direct deposited? I know she did because she confirmed my my trout my tracking. She confirmed my uh, my routing number. That's There you go. She confirmed my routing number like three times. So I'm just like, oh, you know, I got my routing number. So like, what? why am I getting a paper check? So I call my mom and I'm like, hey, what's going on with this? Why am I getting a paper check for my, my stuff? Now take it. We used to live in Pennsylvania before we lived here, right? So in Pennsylvania, we had a bank account. Now I've, okay, I'm about to age myself real bad right now. And I feel some type of way even saying it. I don't even like saying this, but I've had the same bank account for 12. No, no. I've had the same bank account for 22 years. That's, that's a long time. <laughs> Ever since I've had my first job, I've had this exact bank account. This bank has gone through three or four different names and I've had this exact same bank account Every time they've changed names and everything. I know my my account number by heart, my routing number by heart. Everything I need to know, I know by heart from this bank because I've been with it for so long, right? Sorry, I'm puffing on my bait break. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, why am I getting a paper check? And she goes, I don't know. You should have gotten it direct deposited. I'm like, I am aware of this, which is why I'm confused as to why there's a paper check here. And my and Mr. Coffee's sitting over there. He's like, yeah, your daughter thinks I'm hooking. And he's like, she's like, hold up, who's hooking? I'm like, your son-in-law over here hooking because apparently I thought the check was for him. And she goes, I mean, if you want to give him the full check, I'm like, I'll give him I'll, I'll give him a vasectomy. I ain't giving him the full check. Like, no, we're, we're not doing that. Um, me and Mr. Coffee both have a bad habit of spending. Like, who else has, like, uh, I'm an impulse shopper. So, like, I, I buy on impulse. If I want it, I just get it. Usually I make sure my bills are paid first. Like I always pay bills first before I go crazy and like spending money. And it's hard because I need to save up money because this this year uh, I will be flying Minna out to us. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to be able to fly her out this year. So I'm saving up the money that I'm making with Cincy to fly her out and fly her home this year. Um, just because she doesn't want to make the long road trip in the car again. And I don't blame her because I hate I hate waiting for Mr. Coffee to drive all the way out there and then drive all the way back. And then when it's time to take her home, drive all the way back out there and then drive all. It's the, it's the most nerve wracking thing. Do you get like your nerves all shot whenever your spouse goes on a long road trip if they go without you? I I can't stand it. Like I hate when Mr. Coffee goes on long road trips because I, 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 I'm always like very I'm, I, I trust his driving. I don't trust everybody else's driving. Like, it's not like you don't trust your spouse's driving or your family's driving. 
is that you don't trust the other people on the road, okay? So I'm like very, I get very anxious when he's on the road, especially when he's on the road with Mena by himself. Um, so I'm just like, Ugh. I don't, and because I, I know how Mena, she will sleep the entire time. And sometimes he needs somebody to talk to him while he's driving to help kind of keep him focused. And she sleep. Mena is her mother's child. Mena gets in the car and before you can turn on the engine, she sleep. Like the, the sweet, sweet sound of the engine roar makes her fall asleep. So I'm just like, I worry because I'm like with Mena in the car with him, she's over there snoring, drooling on herself. He looks over, she's snoring, drooling on herself. And he's just sitting there like all jealous, like, Man, I sure wish I could sleep like that. It must be nice. And I'm just like, I, I just don't like dri him driving for long distances. So I'm going to try to save up my Cincy money to uh, do plane tickets to get them back and forth. Now, I don't do airports, okay? I do, after the first time we went to go get Mena in the airport and we got stuck there for 12 hours, I do, I no longer am, I'm not an airport person. I can't, like, can you, can you navigate an airport? I cannot navigate an airport to save my life. Like, why? Like, they're, they're huge, and I get lost. I got lost going to the bathroom, and it was, like, th 30 feet away from us, okay? But the, the, a plane had just let out, and this is back when we got Mena the first time. A plane had just released its passengers, and in the shuffle and bustle of people getting off the plane and everything, and we were waiting for the plane to get sanitized and all that other fun stuff before we got on it to go get her, and... I was like, I got to go to the bathroom quick. And Mr. Coffee's like, we'll make it quick. Well, then people started coming out of nowhere. And I'm playing like Frogger trying to get to the bathroom. And somehow I got pushed way far up to the restaurant part of the, the airport. I had to call Mr. Coffee because I'm like, I have no clue where I'm at right now. I was like four gates over. And he's like, how did you get all the way over there? It's a straight line. I'm like, I'm trying to make a straight line and a zigzag of people. It was just a whole hot mess. And so we, we I don't do airports. I'm not a... I'm a homebody, okay? I like to eat and sit at home where it's safe. I don't want to do airports. So I told Mr. Coffee he can do it because he doesn't mind airports. He doesn't, I, and I don't want him driving like that a lot too because his back is still really bad. Um, he hasn't had any issues with it, but I can only imagine sitting in a car for 40 some odd hours uh, within a month's time can't be good for his back. So I'm like, well, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna fly Mina out this year. And I'm thinking that this, this might be my last chance to see her before she turns 18. Um, unless we go to Pennsylvania to go visit because, uh, she wants to get a job so she can buy a car. Now, when you were growing up, did your parents buy your first car or did you buy your first car? I bought my first car. My parents were not about that life. They were like, look, listen, you want it, you buy it. And so that's always been the mentality I had. And I, I really appreciate, like, before, before counseling, I thought my parents were just horrible people that would just, they were just, they, they would tell us that they were broke, but in reality, they weren't broke. Because we always, we never wanted for anything. We always had everything we wanted. Needed, on the other hand, if we, or, or, no, other way around. We always had everything we needed. If we wanted anything, it was, you have to work for it. And I'm like, I don't understand why we have to work for it. Both y'all work, some of y'all work two jobs. And we got to work for what we want. Like, I was that type of kid growing up. So if you think I'm, like, snobby now, I was I was worse growing up. Because I didn't understand why my parents wouldn't just give me what I wanted. And now that I have children of my own, I'm like, yeah. No, forget you, kid. Get a job. Maggie's sitting over here. I'm not. I don't care. Go work at McDonald's or something. I ain't buying you nothing. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I'm that type of parent now that I'm just like, you want it, go earn it for yourself. It, it'll feel better if you earn it for yourself. Like, Back in my, like, I'm, I'm now that parent that says back in my day, um, I had to work for everything I wanted. And I did. I paid for myself to go to modeling school. I bought my first car. I got my first, well, technically, I, I got my first apartment with Minna's dad. Because I, I've never, I've never lived on my own before. Uh, minus the five years that Mr. Coffee lived he, in North Dakota here before he moved us out here. I had never lived on my own before. So I've never owned like my own apartment, paid my own bills or anything like that. It's, I've always lived with somebody, which means I, I've also never had my own room before. Like if you actually think about it, how many of us have never had our own room before? Because I've never had my own room because I've always lived with somebody. And the person I live with was obviously a spouse. So I had to share a room with them. So I'm like, minus that little five years that Mr. Coffee was up here and I lived in Pennsylvania, I've never, like, been on my own before. Not that I'm saying that I want to, because believe me, I don't. But 
I've never really like had the experience of having like my own first apartment where it was just me and I could barely eat anything and I was just eating ramen noodles every day and then going to work and everything else. I've never had that experience because I always live with someone, but I've also never had my own room. So yeah, I'm not even sure how I got on that, but I was just, it, that just, it's always the thought that baffles me is that fact that I've like Maggie and Orion, I tell them all the time that they're spoiled and I know they're spoiled because I spoil them. Like I'm a parent. That's what I'm supposed to do. Um, I spoil them because, like, they right now, the kids have their own rooms. Now, I don't know many kids that have their own rooms, but not only have their own rooms, but have their own bathrooms. That wasn't an intentional thing. That was, this house was bigger than the other house that we were looking at, and this one had bathrooms that everybody, like, nobody would have to wait to go to the bathroom. So that's why we chose this house. So not only do they have their own rooms, they have their own bathrooms. You know how many years it took me to get a place with my own bathroom? Look, listen, I didn't have my own bathroom in my room until I lived here. And so I'm just like, or, or I'm sorry, until I lived in North Dakota, not this particular place, because the place we lived before this place did have a bathroom in our room. Stay hydrated, folks. Mm. Got that French vanilla coffee. What is your, your coffee go-to in the mornings? Like, or I should say your drink go-to. If you drink coffee... What kind of coffee? I like French vanilla. French vanilla is like my jam. Anyways. So yeah. So after Mr. Coffee got me stuck, uh, unstuck in the bathroom, um, I continued to work on this pattern. Now at this point, this pattern has me so frustrated that the lady literally was like, don't even worry about the test. If you want to do it just to show it, that is fine. And she's like, don't even worry about the test. We got the proofreading from you done. And essentially the other, because there is more than one tester on the project. So she goes, you know, the other lady did complete it. So I'm not really worried about the tester part. We just need the proofread part, which you've already done. So don't worry about it. Did you think that that, mean, that meant that I stopped working on it? Nope. Saturday, we stayed up until 6 a.m. Actually, technically, no. I don't know what time I passed out. I passed out shortly after I got out of uh, Jeremy's Live on Saturday. I was sitting on the couch and I was working on my tester pattern and I passed out. I don't know what time I passed out. I know I woke up at 7 a.m. And I'm like, why is it so goddamn on bright outside? Now, for those of you who don't know, it's almost time to turn back time again. It's daylight savings times is upon us. Um, so I'm just like, oh, snap, ready to get that extra hour of sleep. Like I'm going like I'm going to go to bed hella late. <laughs> <laughs> and really, it's not going to make a lick of difference that I got that extra hour because I'm going to be up hella late. That's always that's always how it goes. Always. But I was wondering, I'm like, why the hell is it so bright outside? Like, even right now, before daylight savings time, like, we have really long uh, darkness in the winter months. And so, for us, it would, like, in the mornings, it would not get light outside until about 10 o'clock. It's been light outside since I woke up at 7. And I'm like, what the flip is happening? I woke up this morning. You ever wake up in a panic because you think you're late for something? I woke up this morning. I'm not even joking you. I sh I was laying in bed. I sat straight up. And I was like sitting there in like this crouching thing like I was about to attack somebody. And I was like, Mr. Coffee, we're late. I look at the clock. It was like 7 o'clock. And I was like, oh, no, we're not. He's, he he looks at me. He goes, what's, what's wrong with you? What are, what are you doing? I'm like, I thought we were late. It's so light outside. And he goes, I am aware of this. Like, now, Mr. Coffee is, is used to this because he's been up here for almost 10 years now. So he's used to this. Me, no. I'm still not used to the whole, like, super long winter nights and, like, really bright uh, summers and stuff like that. So I'm just like, I freak out a little bit when it comes time to for everything to change. Now, Saturday was the first time I noticed that it started getting brighter earlier outside. Okay. So I was just kind of like, oh, sorry, I had the extra, the excess wax come out of my pen from the side, and now I'm just going to stick it back in there. But I'm like, I'm not used to this. So, like, I free, I still freak out when the cha the time changes, because I'm like, ah, I don't do well with change. It's like, <laughs> don't worry, I'm working on my change problem. <laughs> but I still freak out, because I'm like, what the hell? Like, I, I feel like I, I constantly, for at least the first month or so, I feel like I've overslept. And I'm just like, great. Because if day, if you know daylight savings time and you have pets and you deal with daylight savings time, because I know there are some states, I think I want to say like Arizona. I want to say it's Arizona. 
wherever Tia lives, if you know Tia's crazy craft addiction, uh, Tia lives in, I think, I, if I remember correctly, she lives in a place where they don't deal with time zones or the time zone change. And I'm like, oh, you lucky bird. Like, seriously? I'm like, you know how annoying it is? Okay, when you have a, a bunch of electronics in your house, you think you're like stunting until that daylight savings time comes and you got to change all those freaking clocks. Look, listen, the way my life is set up, I can't do it. Oh my gosh, I am, I'm, I, I'm already not ready. I'm already panicking about having to change the 700 clocks in this house because of daylight savings time. Now, most of the clocks, like if you have an Echo device, I believe it will update itself. But like we have actual alarm clocks upstairs and... Of course, we have that one alarm clock because there's always one. We have that one alarm clock that uh, is broken, but it still works. So we didn't want to get rid of it. But technically, it's Mr. Coffee's alarm clock from big, back when he was in like high school. And you have to like hold down one button and punch the other button to get it to change time. Yeah, I have like two of those clocks upstairs. And then I have another clock where I have no clue how to change it. So I'm just like, you're going to be right twice a day, okay? Because I don't know how to change you. And there's no instruction manual to you right now. So you will be right twice a day. A broken clock is right twice a day, okay? So I'm just saying, like, I, I'm not ready for daylight. And somebody, I think somebody wrote that in a comment on one of my pictures or something this weekend. And I was like, look, listen, stop saying that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And then Orion, surprisingly, uh, I put up a picture of Orion this weekend. He emerged from his room and playing his computer. He wanted to come downstairs and play with, like, the family. And I'm just like, hold up. You want to play with us? I'm like, you want to come out and get sunshine? He's like, no. I don't want to get sunshine. I just want to play cards. And I was like, so sit you by the window and play cards? Bet. I keep trying to tell Orion that he, he, he okay. I've mentioned this numerous times before, but for those new people on the channel, um, my children are mixed and for some reason they are like chameleons. So their skin will change color depending on, uh, the season. So in the warmer seasons, their skin will get a dark shade or not a dark shade, a light shade of brown. In the winter months, their skin is white. They look white. They, people see me and they ask me if I'm babysitting. They're white. Okay. And then in the summer, People ask Mr. Coffee, is he babysitting? Because then the kids look black and they're just like, we're confused, okay? And all three of my kids are the same way. They both have white dads or both sets have white dads. And of course I'm black, so uh, yeah. But Minna and Minna's skin will do the same thing. It will get super uh, dark in the summer and then get super light in the winter. And I'm like, they're like chameleons. So... I keep trying to tell Orion that if he gets enough sunlight, it will take and brighten his skin up. Because this poor kid, I'm like, at this point, you're you're so bright, you're transparent, kid. Like, we gotta, like, I gotta put, like, a heat lamp in his room or one of those, like, fake sun tanning beds or something. Because, like, this kid, this poor kid, he needs the outdoor life in his life. And we do plan on doing stuff outdoors. Like, uh, we were supposed to go to the trampoline park, I think, two weeks ago? And we never made it because Maggie ended up spending the entire weekend outside playing with friends and I would much rather her play with her friends than go to the trampoline park where her and her brother are more likely going to fight about who gets to jump on what and where and how so I let her play that weekend and I figured we could take them another weekend now take it this trampoline park is like two seconds from my house like we can literally walk there and right next to it is a cold stone creamery so I'm like yeah we can go make a day of it like we can go over to the trampoline park, jump for a little bit. Once they're done jumping, we can take them over to Cold Stone, get them some ice cream, make a nice summer day out of it. So we're going to be doing that here shortly. Spring break is coming up, though. Um, I'm not exactly sure when it's coming up, but it is coming up. I kind of wanted to go visit my family, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to because the way my husband's uh, work life is set up right now with oil the way it is, um, I probably will not be seeing Mr. Coffee too much right, uh, now. He's already started working later hours going in on the weekends and everything else like that, um, just because of oil prices going up. Now, for those folks that are wondering, yes, Mr. Coffee works in the oil field, but he doesn't work on the rigs. He actually works in a shop that rents out tools to the rigs. So, essentially, if something were to happen with, say, like, if there was a boom, yeah, that would affect his job because he would get hella busy. Now, if there were layoffs in the oil field, they don't typically deal with Mr. Coffee's part of working. Like, his his part of working is safe in that aspect because as long as there are companies out there... Sorry, this canvas is sliding everywhere. But as long as there are companies out there that still are on the rigs, 
his company will still have a demand for people to, you know, work. So they're they're not gonna be good like getting rid of anybody or anything. Cause I know I think the last time that oil got really bad, people were, you know, very concerned that Mr. Coffee was gonna lose his job and everything else. And I'm like, no, no, no. The way he his job is set up, no, he won't lose his job. And now he's actually in charge of the department that he's in. So yeah, he definitely ain't losing no job. He's fine. Um so yeah, so Orion came out and we we sat and I I literally I'm not even joking y'all like we sat in the kitchen and I was so excited because I I that's the first time I sat down and then I realized uh so we got our kitchen dining room our our dinette I should say from Ashley's furniture if you don't know what it is it's a furniture store we got our furniture from the furniture store and I got my Nook which is the little cabinet that I have that I do unboxings on sometimes. And then we got our kitchen table, which we need to buy two more chairs because when we have house guests, uh, I would like for them to be able to sit down. <laughs> and I'm mad that they sell the chairs separately and it's like $100 for a chair and we have like the tall chairs. So uh, they're chairs that me and Mr. Coffee can slide into, but the kids kind of have still have to jump a little bit to get into them. Not really. They're tall enough to get in. Maggie jumps to get into it. And I think that's just because Maggie likes to jump. But, uh, yeah, I'm like, we own our dinette set now. Like, we finally got it paid off. And we bought it when we first moved into the house. And I wanted to do payments because when you do stuff like that, it builds your credit. It's a way to build your credit without having to get, like, credit cards. And so we finally got it paid off, like, a week ago. Or, no, it's been two weeks now. So, yeah, about two weeks ago, we got it paid off. And I sat down and I was like, I just realized something. And Mr. Coffee's like, what? I'm like... This is our dinette set now. And he goes, what do you mean? Now, Mr. Coffee doesn't deal with the bills, and I'll explain why here in a few minutes. And I was like, this is ours now. Like, we paid it off. And he's like, oh, we did? And I was like, yeah, I paid it off, like, a couple of weeks ago. And he's like, oh, snap. That's awesome. We can go look for a couch now. Look, listen, the way my life is set up, no, we can't. We need to look for a new couch because I don't, with the ferrets, I don't like having the recliners because uh, my couch is, uh, an electric recliner. So essentially it has the metal mechanisms in it that go up and down, all of that fun stuff. And so with the ferrets, you have to be very careful when putting up the recliners because, uh, yeah, you could kill a ferret. So I'm just like, yeah, I need to probably get a new couch. Um, I do want a couch with a recliner, but I would rather have a couch with a chase because then I don't have to worry about putting the recliner up every time the ferrets come out. Um, that and I just lay all over the couch anyway, so I might as well get a couch with a chase. Now I don't want like a. I kind of don't. I don't. I don't want a sectional, but I'm pretty sure that most um, chase lounges come with sectionals. And we had found a set that we really like. It's all black, and I told him no more leather because that couch was actually a gift to Mr. Coffee. Like I don't know, eight nine years ago, um, that couch was a gift to Mr. Coffee. Actually, no, it's been longer than that. Because we bought that before he came up here. So it had to have been at least 11 or 12 years ago. Because he's been here for almost 10 years. So the couch is hella old. But the leather is coming off of it. And so I'm just like, yeah, no more leather couches. No, no. No more leather couches. Um, but Mr. Copy doesn't handle the bills in our house. Because uh, I don't know about anybody else. I handle the bills because if I let Mr. Coffee handle it, nothing would get paid because he doesn't know what he's doing. Now, he's great at math. I'm good at math if there's a dollar sign in front of it. Mr. Coffee is just good at math, and that's fine. But the way everything is set up, he doesn't understand the way I pay bills. So to Mr. Coffee, when a bill is due, he's just like, oh, look, a bill's due. Let me go ahead and pay it. He'll pay it and go on about his life. And I'm like, well, what about the other bills? He's like, well, I don't have enough to pay all the bills. I just, I have enough to pay, like, say, five bills out of seven. And I'm like, no, no, you got to pay something on every bill every month. And he's like, well, this bill's going to have to. I'm like, if you do that, you will consistently be, be paying bills. I'm like, one check goes towards the rent. The other check for the month goes towards the other little things like utilities and stuff like that. So I'm explaining this to him. And we, we tried this for about a month because he got tired of me saying, my money and your money, because I consider my YouTube money and every all the money that I make with my side hustles, that's my money. And then his money is what he makes from work. But he doesn't like that because he's like, there's some times where your, your checks are bigger than mine, and I'm like, this should be the house money. And I'm like, well, it is the house money, 
But if I need to buy something from the channel or one of my subscribers go, hey, it's Miss Coffee, can you check out this company? I need to make sure I have those funds available so I can go, yes, I can check out those companies and then go check out the companies. I don't have time to sit here and go, I have to wait until I get paid again because I'm broke because I was paying bills. I'm like, only part of my check goes towards paying bills because I do use the house to make my videos. Mm. So I'm like, only part of that money goes towards uh, paying bills. The other part of it is mine. And so I essentially use it as I see fit. Now, Mr. Coffee will get a portion of his paycheck, but not all of it. Because if I gave him all of it, he would buy stupid stuff with it, okay? Like, I'm not even joking. He would just buy video games and monsters. I don't, I don't need him staying up forever in a day. And so I'm just like, you have to find a way to pay the bills, but you have to put something on every bill except for, you know, like, say, like, the rent. So when it comes to like paying utilities, you have to pay the, the credit cards, the car notes, the insurances, the uh, light bill, the water bill and all that. So he's like, how do you pay all that? There's not enough here. I'm like, there's plenty of there. You just have to know how to fadangle it around. Mr. Coffee doesn't know about finesse or fadangling. The F words are not in his forte. <laughs> so I'm just like, look, listen, let me handle the bills. You go make the money. I'll take care of the bills. That's why we had this arrangement in the first place because he didn't know what the hell he was doing. And every once in a while, he'll get curious and be like, okay, well, what bills do we need to pay? Well, I was going to pay this bill. Well, why don't we pay this bill? Well, I know why I'm not paying that bill, but now I have to explain it to you apparently. I don't like having to explain the bills to him because it gets super frustrating because he just doesn't understand why. You just, you see a bill, you don't pay it. Just immediately just pay it. I'm like, because you got to you gotta finesse your bills around. You got to figure out what you can and can't pay for the month. And then, like, maybe I can't pay my car note with your second check. And I have to wait for that first check to come in to pay rent and the other part of my, my car note. You can't just pay bills and just be like, there you go. All of them are paid. No, that's not how it works. Now, if you were making enough money that you could pay all the bills, have some left over and everything else. Because he'll, the, okay, this is what happened the last time I let Mr. Coffee pay the bills. He paid them the way he wanted to pay them. He got me frustrated because he was like, uh, what was it? I forgot to pay the electric bill. And we got a notice in the mail that the bill was, date, was late. And he's like, well, what are you doing? Like, you're not even doing it correctly. He goes, I will do it this month. Okay. Y'all, he did it for a month. And he kept forgetting to add in the groceries. So I'm like, how are we supposed to get food, sir? And he's like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, you left enough money in here literally just for us to get groceries and that's it. And he's like, I forgot about groceries. You forgot about eating? Seriously? Like, look, look. <laughs> love my husband to death? No, stay away from the checkbook. I got this. You worry about making the money and playing your video games. I will, I will balance the checkbook because I swear I, I can't leave it up to him to do it. I can't do it. So, yeah. But it was, uh, besides the dogs trying to like, you know, take over the bathroom while I was in there. It was a pretty decent weekend. Uh, Maggie did get to go out a couple of times and play with her friends. Uh, she didn't want to on Sunday, though. On Sunday, she was just kind of like, I'm just tired. And now, I think, and it is about that time of year, I think Maggie's going through a growth spurt again, which, you know, growth spurts have always been scary because when she hits a growth spurt is when her medication needs to be adjusted. And I'm pretty she's sure she's hitting a growth spurt because right now Maggie has uh, narcolepsy. So, like, you can be in the middle, like, we were in the middle of playing Minecraft, because I did stop my tester pattern long enough to play Minecraft with the kids, and Orion sat there and let me, uh, yet again, get eaten by something. I want to say it was like a wolf, and I'm like, dude, what the hell? He, he sat there and watched, and then just laughed as it was eating my carcass, and I was just like, why didn't you tell me that there was wolves up here? He goes, I thought you knew. How often do I play Minecraft? Now, if, if it's, like, Among Us, I got you all day. Minecraft? No, I can't do it. I can't do it. I suck at Minecraft. I can't play Minecraft. But I like playing with the kids because then, like, you know, get that family time in. Now, I, I know a lot of the times it sounds like, you know, we're over here just family timing it up. But a lot of times for us, too, family time could mean everybody just off doing what they want to do instead of, like, all us all having to do the same thing or, you know, watching a movie or something. Because we don't typically watch a lot of TV. Like, the kids are not interested in, like, Disney movies or anything like that. Maggie is. So, like, we will watch, like, we've watched, we've probably watched Encanto, like, 20 times at this point. Like, I can quote the whole movie to you, scene by scene. Probably play it out, too. 
And Maggie, of course, she loves that movie. Orion's never seen it because the moment he sees it, he's like, nope, gotta go. Now, he doesn't watch it. He won't watch it because of the character Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. And every time he sees the character or somebody mentions that he looks like Bruno Mars, that's the first thing he thinks of. And he, he doesn't like it. Now, he, he knows he looks like Bruno Mars. We tell him all the time. But he doesn't like people telling him, you know, hey, you look like Bruno Mars. So, sorry, I had to stretch. But, uh, so, yeah, he won't watch Encanto with us. We barely got him to watch Lilo and Stitch with us because Maggie's new obsession right now is Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. And, like, what was your child's favorite movie, like, cartoon movie growing up? Right, Maggie has a couple, of course. Like, I think kids of this generation all love Frozen. They all love, like, Encanto, especially right now with Encanto because of all the inclusion and everything. Like, Maggie's, like, obsessed right now with these movies. Now, if I were to try to get her to watch, like, Cinderella, no, she won't watch it. If I try to get her to watch, the only cartoon movie like that, like, Disney movie I can get her to watch is uh, Princess and the Frog. She likes Princess and the Frog. But, like, and she'll she'll watch Frozen, of course. But if I try to get her to watch, like, the old school classics, no, she, she ain't about that life. No. She will watch Rapunzel, which is the new one, uh... Is it called Rapunzel? I don't think the new one's called Rapunzel. What is it called? Uh, not, I about to say Frozen. Tangled is the new one. She'll watch that one, but she won't watch, like, the old school one. And so, like, she likes, of course, the newer cartoons. She'll watch Alice in Wonderland, which is one of my favorites. But she won't watch, like, the old school version of it. She likes the version with, uh... She likes the newer version with, like, the Jabberwocky and everything else. Um, so she will watch that. And that's not even a cartoon, but she will watch it because she likes the queen with the big head. And I'm like, of course you do because you're evil. Um, so, yeah, but surprisingly, Maggie has, minus at dinner time, Maggie has actually been quite behaved lately. She's trying to get those Christmas presents. Like, she keeps, she, I don't know what reminded her that she still had Christmas presents in the closet. And for those folks wondering, or if you're new and you don't know what I'm talking about, over Christmas, Maggie kept misbehaving. Maggie is my nine-year-old. She kept misbehaving, and we told her, you know, you don't even deserve Christmas of the way you've been behaving, and she didn't. She was she was horrible. She's lucky she did get what she did get because she was acting horrible around Christmas time. And so we stashed away about seven gifts. Out of the seven gifts, she's only gotten two. It is now March, and she still has five gifts in the closet. Now, they're in there. She has seen them. She can't see what they are because they're wrapped up. Because they were wrapped up for Christmas. They're, they're wrapped up, so she can't see them. But she knows they're there. So she's been on her best behavior, minus at dinner time. And so we found a way to trick her to eat her food. And so what happens is before she goes to bed at night, I brush and braid her hair so that her hair is, like, protected while she sleeps. Um, protected from what? The boogeyman. I don't know. You just, that's just how you protect your hair at night. You sleep on a slope pillowcase and you, you braid it up or something. So I braid her hair. And I told her, because she'll be like, ow, my head. Ow, mom, you're being too rough. I'm like, I'm not being rough, and I'm not. What I, what I told her was, that's not me being rough. That's you not eating your dinner. That tells me that you didn't eat your food because you're not big and strong. She's like, I did eat it. And she won't say ow the rest of the time. It, it was hilarious. I did it last night where I was brushing her hair because she got a shower. And then she came down right before dinner was ready. Or no, she came down after dinner was ready because she ate dinner and then she went upstairs. Um, she went upstairs, took a shower, came downstairs, had me, you know, brush and braid her hair. And I'm like, if it hurts, that means you didn't eat your dinner. And so you're not growing up big and strong. Why didn't you eat your dinner, Maggie? Now take it. We all eat dinner together as a family every night. Every night we sit at the, the table and eat dinner together. That's one of the few, like, wholesome things that I will keep forever with my kids is eating dinner with them. Because I do get pretty busy throughout the day. Um especially now with me selling Scentsy and having the channel and doing pattern testing and, you know, just everyday life stuff, I get pretty busy. So there's, there, I, there are a lot of times where I don't get to sit and hang out with the kids. Um, luckily, everything I do is from home, so I don't have to wear pants. Um, but I do get really busy to the point where I don't get to do every, like whenever they, sometimes they ask to play and I'm like, I'm a little busy. I can't play right now. And I feel bad because I don't, 
Now, take it. I'm not trying to play with them every time. Like, I'm, I'm not... I, I didn't make them siblings to play with them all day, okay? But there are times where I would like to play with them, but I'm busy doing something with, some th with something that I can't play with them. And Maggie, of course, she'll get all sad about it. And I'm like, look, listen, the way my life is set up, if you want monies for things, mama's got to work, okay? And where it might not be a job like your dad, I still have a job. And so I have quite a few at this point. And I'm like, so I can't play with you often. And so, like, she'll go play with Orion or she'll play with Mr. Coffee. And then when I get a chance, I will then go play with her. Problem is, Maggie can get quite violent when you play with her. Like, when I'm playing Barbies. And for some reason, the Barbies always end up fighting. Like, there's always a fight. And I'm like, Maggie, I worry about your mental health. And she's like, my mental health is great. I just hope I don't get your mental health, Mommy. It's not so good. You know what? I know it's not good. I go to therapy, ma'am. She goes, that's how I know it's not good. You need therapy. Ugh. I'm telling y'all, these kids don't care about your feelings. They really don't. But yeah, so we, we had a pretty decent weekend. Uh, I feel bad though, because like the ferrets, we opened the cage uh, every day, twice a day for the ferrets to go in and out. Now there are times where I will leave them in the cage for a little bit, like when Mr. Coffee's about to come home, because uh, with him carrying his heavy lunchbox and his book bag and everything else, I don't want him to have to climb over the barrier that we have to put up in for the laundry room. Because, of course, Anna will slide into the laundry room and then go play with all the stuff in there. Now, there's nothing really major that she can play with, but there's, like, the dog food bin. She can't do anything with it, but it's in there. And then, like, there's towels on the bottom shelf of a rack in there. And I just, I don't want her in there messing up anything or pooping or peeing in there because she can't find her way out because it's dark because I don't leave that light on. So, we have to put a barrier up to keep her out of it. And so... I don't like having that barrier up when Mr. Coffee comes home just because I don't want him to have to, like, jump over it just to get into the house. Like, I thought about putting a baby gate there with, like, the little latch with the door. The problem with that is we don't got no babies. <laughs> we don't got no babies. So there's, I don't, I don't want to use a baby gate in my house when we don't got no babies. Plus, I'm pretty sure she would just slide up underneath the baby gate anyways. So, yeah. So, it was a pretty typical weekend in the coffee house. Um, how was your weekend? Did you have a great weekend? Did you take your meds? Drink your water. Did you? I've been trying to do better at drinking at least one or two cups of water a day. It is the most horrible part of my day, but I know water is essential. And I told him, Mr. Coffee, he's like, I can already tell a difference with that you're drinking water um, versus just drinking like coffee or soda because I drink a lot of coffee and soda. And so he's like, I can already tell the difference. He goes, your hair is getting longer. Now, I keep my hair short. I will add extensions to my hair. But for the most part, I keep my hair short. Why? Because I have a whole sheep ass on my head. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I, under my hair cap, okay, there is a lot of hair under there. And I, it's funny because in one of my vlogs that I do for Patreon, uh, some lady asked me, you know, do I actually have hair? And I'm like, why, why would I wear a hair, hair cap if I didn't have hair? Like, I would probably wear a bandana or something like, or like a hat, like a skull hat if I didn't have hair. I'm like, I have hair. It's just always under the hair cap because it's too hot and too much to deal with. Like, uh, some of y'all know the struggle of having the thick hair. And I'm talking about th thick with three C's. Thicker than cold grits on a Sunday after church. Thick, okay? Like, you can't run... This is not the type of hair, okay? I don't have the texture or the type of hair that you can just, like, glide your hand through. Unless you never want to see your hand again, okay? Unless you want to have your hand completely amputated off your wrist... This is not the type of hair that you run your fingers through. Now, I can make it that type of hair by putting, like, a relaxer in it, which I haven't put the creamy crack in my hair in the forever. Which, if you didn't know, relaxers are different for, or as we call them, perms, are different between black folks and white folks. So, for white folks, perms straighten their hair. I guess they call them rods or something. I don't know. Rods is when you curl your hair. Perms is when... They straighten their hair? I, I don't know. Anyways, perms for white people, I believe, curls their hair. But for black people, it straightens our hair. So our kinky, curly hair gets straight, like a board. Straight. And I haven't used a relaxer in probably like, mm, I'm going to say three years. 
because they do do a lot of damage to your hair if, if you do them continuously. And the first time uh, my stepmom put a relaxer, now she, I went from having a jerry curl, don't laugh at me or judge me. Uh, I went from having a jerry curl to my stepmom putting a relaxer in. It's right around the time that I guess her and my dad got married and she decided she was gonna straighten my hair because she wanted to see how long it was because it was always so curly. Well, when she did that, I had a Tina Turner moment. And if you don't know what that means, my hair fell out. And it didn't grow for the longest time. And I was mad at her because I'm like, you did this. Why would you do that? She didn't realize that it was going to make my hair fall out. And then my hair would, my, my hair probably didn't grow, like start actually growing until I was like 16. I always had like this weird little boy bowl cut. And I hated it. And I always blame my stepmom for it because I'm like, why would you put that perm in my hair? Because she put it in her, her daughter's hair, so she didn't think it would matter if she put it in mine, and I don't think she knew that the chemicals that were in my hair already were going to eat away at my hair and make me pretty much bald, okay? I was bald probably for a little bit before I, I got hair back again. So, like, and, and that's not the type of stuff that I could put in, like, Maggie and Minna's hair, because, one, uh, Minna has hair... She has a mixture of her dad's and my hair. The thing is, Minna's dad has also has curly hair. Uh, he has... He's, what, I think he's blonde, maybe a dirty blonde. Um, and he, he has long hair, so I've seen it long, and it, it does curl a little bit. Like, it has, a, like, a little bit of a wave to it. And then, of course, I have, like, 4C Afro hair. And so, poor Minna, she, she yeah, that poor little girl. Now, Orion, Orion got my hair texture, but then Maggie got Mr. Coffee's hair texture. Like, the girls seem to take more after their dads, and then Orion takes more after me. But then after I posted that picture this weekend, look, listen. I can now see what everybody says when they say that Orion looks like Mr. Coffee. If you have not seen the picture, it's over on my Instagram. You can't miss it. It's the bright it's the bright yellow one. <laughs> because his skin looks yellow. And I, I even asked him, I'm like, are you feeling okay? Like, I thought you had jaundice there for a second. I'm like, you look a little yellow. I just realized it was just a reflection of the sun off his skin because he came downstairs. Huh, <sighs> this poor child. <laughs> so yeah, like, poor mixed kids. Like, I feel bad. And I, the funny thing is, one of the things I always wondered was, I, I've seen mixed kids like my whole life. I had mixed friends growing up and everything. And I always wonder what combination made the hair that sandy brown and super curly? Because that's how I was picturing my kids would turn out. Nope. Nope, all three of them have dark brown hair. And I'm like, of course you do. They don't even have black hair like me. Like, my hair is black. And they don't even have the black hair like me. Their hair is dark brown. Like, well, Minna's is dark brown. It's, I would say it's like mine, but it's, mine's is black. Hers is actually dark brown. Because it changes colors. Her and Minna, Maggie's hair will turn reddish brown in the summer and then dark brown in the winter. Orion's just stays dark brown. It just stays dark brown. So I was wondering what combination of people made the dusty brown hair because I always loved that color of hair. And it's like, essentially, if I bleach my hair, it would turn that color. And I'm like, I'm not about to bleach my baby's hair. Like my babies are only, well, except for Minna. Minna's not a baby. Minna turns 16 this year, which is another reason why we want to get her up here. Um, if you've, if you have children and you've seen Spongebob, then you, you you know the song I'm about to talk about. So for Minna's birthday this year, she's turning 16. And so Mr. Coffee has it in his head that he wants to get her up here come hell or high water. He wants to get her up here so that he can sing the Spongebob happy birthday song to her. If you don't know what song I'm talking about, it's an episode of Spongebob where Pearl turns 16, which is Mr. Krabs' daughter. I don't know how a crab had a well for a daughter, but it ain't none of my business. Um... But he wants to sing that song to her and make her the cake that she got from Boys That Don't Cry, which is the name of the band that sang the song. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, listen, our life is just weird. And so he wants to sing that song to her. So he's like, come hell or high water, I will make her this cake. And if I have to make it and then drive it all the way to Pennsylvania, I will. But she's getting this cake and I'm singing that song. And I'm like, OK, he's been telling her that he's going to sing her that song probably since she was three, which is when me and him got married. So Minna was three years old when me and Mr. Coffee got married. And that's another reason or a way I can tell uh, how long me and Mr. Coffee have been married because uh, 
Minna was three years old, and since she turned 16 this year, that means me and Mr. Coffee would be married 13 years this year, which is weird to think of because I don't feel like I've been married to a guy for 13 years, especially a guy that I wasn't even planning on seeing again after the first encounter I had with him, then somehow he's still here, and he's still alive, and he, you know, I still, I still love him. Um, there's days where I want to choke the life out of him, but I still love him because it's not a real relationship if you don't have moments of wanting to strangle your partner. There, I said it. I love my husband. Do I love him every day? Of course I do. But are there days that he says one more thing backwards to me that I'm going to choke the life out of him and then call his mama to come get him? Yes. Yes, but that's part of being in a relationship. Not everything is happy unicorn farts and rainbows. You're going to have rough days. And when me and Mr. Coffee got together at first, we had a lot of rough days. But nowadays, it's just more mellow days. But then every once in a while, he, he reminds me of my gangsta. And I'm like, look, listen, you say one more thing to me, and I will choke the life out of you. And call I always tell him I'm going to call his mom. <laughs> she doesn't fuss at him or anything. I just, I, that's just, I don't know. I just tell him I'm going to call his mom because I figured that will scare him if nothing else. Sorry, I keep running my hands across it because it's so smooth. <laughs> look how sparkly those drills are. Bev, you're going to look gorgeous in all your sparkle. I just wish these drills would line up a little bit better in this tray. We're just going to... We're going to refresh the drills, if you don't know what I'm talking about. If you have drills that don't line up nice in your tray for some reason, I like to do what I call refreshing the drills, so I'll put them back in the bag. So we're just going to... Nope, nope, get down, get down. Oh, real quick, somebody asked me in live, uh, Cat Alley, I think it's the name. They asked me in live where I get my nails from. I get my nails from Etsy. Uh, I like to support small business, so I will go on Etsy. Uh, you can check out Mystery of Diamonds, Nails by Muda, and that's M-O-O-D-A. Uh, Mystery of Diamond Art, or Mystery of Diamond Designs, I believe is uh, Mystery's name on Etsy. Uh, there's just I just type in press-on nails, and yeah, these are press-on. I type on press. I type in press in nails, and then I find a set that I like. Uh, most of the people on there have really good nails. Now, the person that made these, I do like them, but I wish they were made just a little bit better. I'm just saying, um, they are nice, but I, I do wish that they were made just a little bit better because I can tell that the person that's doing them is new. But I still like to support small business, so. Um, so yeah, I, I thought I'd put that out because that's one of the things that stuck out to me about live on Friday. Somebody was like, "Where do you get your nails?" Etsy. So, so check out Etsy for now. <laughs> Most people don't think to go to Etsy for uh, press-ons. And then there's another chick, uh, Nails by Show Off on Instagram is another place. I love, love, love her nails. Sometimes they're a little too bougie for me, but I do love her nails. So I will buy nails from her too. But uh, yeah, so it was a it was a typical coffee house weekend. We had we had a little bit of shenanigans. We did get to play with the kids a little bit. I'm still working on this tester pattern. I want to throw it out the window. It's the reason why you you don't see a lot of progress on this kit is because I was working on a tester pattern all weekend. And even when I'm done here, I have to go back and work on the tester pattern some more. So until that tester pattern is complete, I cannot work on this the way I want to. And it sucks because the canvas that I told you guys that I had to do as soon as it came in, came in yesterday. So, or it came in Saturday. So I have to hurry up and get through this kit because I have to get to this other kit, which I'm excited for because it's a round and it's not super big. It's a little bit smaller than this. If I, if I remember correctly, I think it's like a 50 by 50, I think. But y'all will see that video on Thursday this week. And it's it's a company called Carrot. Um, so I'm interested to see how their drills and stuff hold up because, you know, it's a new company. Plus, like I said, they wanted me to work on it immediately. And I was like, well, as long as I'm not in the middle of another project, I can work on it immediately. The problem is it was also supposed to be here a month ago and it just showed up. Like they told me they're, they, they had like all these times that they wanted me to work on the kit. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Are you going to guarantee that it's going to be here on time? Because if you make, that's why I was holding off on the witch kit because I thought that kit was coming in and I was supposed to have that one go up next. Nay, nay. Um, it took the Postal Service a while to get it to me, so I was like, well, I can't work on it now because I'm already in the middle of another kit, and I don't stop kits to work on other kits, so you're going to have to wait. So I'm going to have to contact them today because I don't contact companies on the weekends, so I will have to contact them today to let them know, hey, I did get the kit in, but unfortunately it came in hella late, so I gotta, I gotta, you gotta wait until after I'm finished with the kit that I'm currently working on, and nothing I mean, nothing's going to stop me from working on my bevy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 
y'all look y'all 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 give bev some love today is bev's birthday the day i'm recording this which is monday uh march 7th and today's her birthday so y'all y'all go ahead and uh wish bevy a happy birthday in the comment section even though by the day you see this uh it won't be her birthday anymore but y'all can still tell her happy birthday i'm gonna go i got that reminds me to put up something on uh instagram for her but she's being a good sport about this. Like, <laughs> if you did not see, she made a reaction video to my unboxing and I shared it. And I was just like, yeah, I'm going to share this everywhere because I, I need everybody to see. And if you watch the video, she explains what happened. Like, she knows she has a better recollection of what happened and why I got this canvas than I do. And she explains what happened and why I got this kit. Now, if you listen to how she said, no, you won't get a kit with my face on it. It sounded like a dare. So she dared me. No matter what she says, she dared me. So I was just like, yeah, you dared me. It's okay, though. I'll do the kit. So, yeah. But uh, I should probably let you guys go because I do have other stuff I got to do today. I just wanted to finish this black part because, like, there was – I've been wanting to work on this kit all weekend. And that stupid tester pattern is just kicking my butt. So I have to get back to that, finish that, and then I can come back here and paint on my bevy. So – she, like I said, she's being an awesome house guest. She's super quiet. She stays back here, back to herself. She ain't trying to start no drama or anything. So I would definitely rate her a 10 out of 10 of the house guest. But with that said, folks, I got to get out of here. We're almost done. So I'm actually going to finish up this little section right here. Because literally, like, I only had a little bit left to go. So I'm like, why not just finish up the little part that I was doing? These drills slide around real easily on this canvas. Crafties usually has pretty good canvases, so that, that's another reason why I went with Crafties as a custom because I I I've gotten a few canvases from them before, um, so I knew the drill quality and stuff would be really good. And so far, I haven't seen any trash minus like oh, actually I lied one piece of trash since I've started this section that I'm currently working on. Which the sections are kind of big, but I'm a big girl, so I like big sections. <laughs> so. uh I'm going to have to go through and like straighten those up because that's going to bother me. But I did all oh, uh, the diamond lady. I want to say it's the diamond lady over on Instagram. Uh, she just came out with a 15 placer for the metal tips. And I'm like, look, listen, let your girl get that 15 placer. <laughs> let me go ahead and test that out for you. So I will have a, a little tester 15 placer coming and I'm ex I'm excited to get it. Because, like, that's one of the... I do use metal placers, but they're not my favorite. But I'm thinking that it's because they're usually smaller. And I don't like smaller multi-placers. I like bigger multi-placers. So I'm hoping that the bigger one will give me a little bit more hope when it comes to, like, the metal placers. All right. Now we're done with all that black. That's a lot of black. And it's funny because I can see, like, my vape rig, like, sparkling off the drills. <laughs> It's so shiny. Bev, your sweater is so shiny. Oh, my God. But all right, folks, I got to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me jibber-jabber on about absolutely nothing. I really, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave those down in the comment section below. Not you, Bev. You don't have any concerns. <laughs> but please leave those down in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But with that said, folks, I really must bid you adieu. But not before reminding you. Please stay caffeinated, stay crafty, stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, don't touch your face in public, keep your six feet, and always try. Be kind, be courteous, be cool. <laughs>